So this is an arrangement of We'll Take Manhattan by Richard Rogers, which features a steady pulse left hand. Uh, we'll figure it out first. So what the left hand is trying to do during this arrangement is stay pretty much anchored to one note, which is the G with the third finger. Uh, this way it'll be easier to find all the other positions. So for instance, in the beginning, the only thing that needs to move out is the thumb. And I would recommend doing it right away. So for instance, if I'm annotating here, I would put in a little position shift reminder for me right here. Right, so right away move it out. Then, when you get to that second measure, I would practice moving the th fifth finger, a little low there, maybe more like here, um, to C, so that, you know, you don't have to think about uh, being in the right place when time comes to play it. So. Obviously, if the hand is smaller, then you can wait to move to C, maybe right around here as an option. But the point is to get ready in advance. As, as soon as you're able to prepare your position, do it. So, first this. So, I'm already not in position, right? So, I need to practice this. And the way to do it is my favorite way, which is to practice backwards. First, make sure in the, in the beginning of measure two, you're a actually able to play those two notes. Fine. Now, going back, now starting from right around here, right? I'm just playing a D, I'm making sure my thumb is already on where it needs to be, right? Now, I'm going to move back to here, so... Right? It's really easy. You're not doing much. You're just establishing the comfort of keeping the thumb on this key right here while playing all the preceding material. And then finally, starting from right here, you know, don't do that. Do this. So thumb in the right place. Right? And I'm just going to stop. This is going to be my kind of stopping point where I'm making sure that I'm in the right position, everything is set. And then, of course, you back up one more, which is right here, and then you do this. And it should feel much more natural if you keep backing up into that beginning, because you've already established the comfort level of playing with the thumb extended. All right, let's have a quick look at the right hand by itself first. Um, so, this positioning with the elbow kind of coming into my torso space here, uh, you can kind of see it on the overhead video, but what, what's really happening is I'm feeling the need to slightly shift my center line from the E, where it's currently located, right, to something more like a C just to give my right elbow a little more room. This makes it much easier to prepare my initial right hand position, which starts with four and two. Then we'll have to extend that to that F sharp, which is a pretty big stretch. This arrangement might possibly require a, a bigger sized hand, but it's, you know, if you need to roll through a couple of uh, positions, that's absolutely fine. So. Right, if, if, if this is for a smaller hand, but otherwise that. However, the, the thumb is always, always on D. Yeah, it's always ready to play the D when it needs to. That way I'm pretty much set, except for the second finger, which I'm going to extend. Even if that's too much of a stretch, 
I would still lift it out of A and put it on at least G sharp. So I'm getting comfortable with that final stretch. Right, so this is why I would put a little reminder here to put and maybe even add a sharp symbol just to remind me that it's a black key situation. Right, so that's what I really want to get comfortable with. And then when I play the third beat, I can quickly extend there from as, as I play the C. And the only thing I need to adjust is the fifth finger for the last melody note. Yeah. So again, I would just practice backwards. I would say, at the end of this measure, I have this A, which finishes my uh, rough area of positioning for the first measure, meaning I have to quickly reposition for the second measure, uh, which is that. Yeah, so I'm not just going to play that A, I'm actually going to practice this. However, if I stop right before A, maybe right here, that's, that's where I am. You know, I'm playing F sharp, I'm playing the top D, done. So now, I'm going to hold the E down, right, because you can see that this E keeps on going. So I'm going to hold it down, and then I'm going to even hold down the D right here. So as I'm holding these two down, I'm going to do nothing but practice this adjustment. Right, that's all I'm doing. I'm going from here holding the E, holding the, that yellow highlight D, boom. Nothing else that I need to do. And there's that yellow D. That's all I'm doing, just getting comfortable with that fifth finger adjustment. Once that's done, I'm going to keep backing up. Now I'm going to hold down, let's say, this F sharp, and that E, big stretch. You can see the angle of my fifth finger to make it comfortable. And so I am doing nothing but striking the D and then following with that final um, two note interval in, in the right hand. One more time. Holding the F sharp, holding the E and just stopping. Making sure that this is easy or at least as easy as possible given the stretch. That, that, that would be an example for a, a smaller hand. Just letting go of that F sharp so I can reach the E, but still stretching the thumb out to D, right? I don't want to do it like that. That will be pretty stupid. So keep, keep that extension as wide as you can on the edges of the white keys. So I've established what to do in that second part of the measure. Now let's just stop. I'm going to get rid of all of these. I'm going to stop right here now before that third beat just to make sure I can get into it as well. Right, so first we start with holding the C right here. And as I'm holding it, I'm making sure to span to make that stretch F sharp E yeah so that when I need to I can go like this I'm not going to do it now I'm going to stop right where the blue line is but at the beginning just make sure you're like okay holding the C stretching to F sharp stretching to E as wide as I can and then when I need to I let go of the C and I'm ready to strike right here I am from that previous situation is this pair where I'm not playing the G sharp of course I'm just holding my second finger there I'm holding the B down and all I'm doing is this right, I'm playing the C and I'm feeling that opening of the hand or if you find it's absolutely impossible for your hand you might do this let go of the C that's fine 
in the fast tempo you will not notice the, the release but you do want to end up in this F sharp E stretch at the blue line so again I just keep working on this until this stretch becomes more second nature right and then finally uh, we get all the way down to here now notice I'm holding the two notes uh, with my fingers pretty deep inside the keys and so this is an example of where I might want to go deep inside like this whoops sorry about this uh, yes so deep inside the keys so that when I let go of the A with finger 2 I'm actually quite close to the black keys Right, holding down the yellow highlight and then one more time holding it down right one more time always stopping at the blue line just to check did I make the stretch or not okay so now with both hands figured out I can try to put them together I would still do it backwards because that's a very powerful way to feel in control of the situation uh, but you can do it slowly first just to see that it all makes sense so here's the left hand you're making sure it's in the right initial position here's the right hand right so you start easy enough uh, anything wrong so far nothing is wrong but as I go to the next note I have two little adjustments that I have to make in both hands that right so the thumb extends in the right in the left hand the second finger comes over to the black keys like this and then as I keep going here is what happens right at that blue line before beat three and then the only thing I have to do is move that fifth finger as I do it oh something else happened that that I did not talk about third finger it was so comfortable resting on the A when I was working on beats 3 and 4 but here finger 3 in the beginning of the measure is on B so that's yet another thing to work on not only do you extend the F the second finger to the F sharp you actually have to move the third finger from where it's currently at to the A so like this don't hold it here so um, what's the best way to look at it right here at the blue line essentially what we need to do is put in a reminder Oops, that's wrong position right here that we are really in position with two and three if you don't have them ready you will be in trouble for the second part of this measure okay then you're fine all right so let's do it backwards let's start at the very end of the measure a is ready uh, my left hand is ready it's holding the d uh, i'm not going to play the a i'm actually going to use this green line so I'm stopping before at the green line that's it just holding those three notes down ready to go if I need to but I'm not gonna so after this I'm going to use the <laughs> orange highlight since I've run out of yellow right I'm, hol I'm holding the D there I can hold the bottom two notes as well just make sure I've got them down and then transition this should be very very easy so once you've established you can do it just move on holding this down holding this down easy always stop at the same point right stop at the green line and now I'm going to back up to right here holding both third beat notes down the right hand the left hand and going to add that D similarly quite easy the only thing you're having to do is adjust that fifth finger when I do it like this I'm making sure at every point 
Am I in the right position or not? If I'm not, obviously I'm practicing wrong. So D is right here. This whole stretch in the right hand is correct, so I'm good. One more time. If you can do it, you know you've practiced the ending of this measure perfectly. Then, of course, you need to back up further. Now you're holding the C. You're probably going to also hold that F. In the meanwhile, check that the thumb is right here on, on the D in the left hand. Okay, so you're holding the browns or oranges, whatever you want to call them. And then stopping at that same line. One more time. Oop, where is my thumb? In the left hand? Right here. Easy. So m make sure every segment that you're practicing like this is easy before you move on. And if it becomes hard, well, maybe it's too much for today, or maybe you want to reduce it. Maybe instead of going all the way to the green line, let's stop at the blue line. Right, making it a little more manageable. So now, from here. Right, and the reason it's getting harder is because, see on that blue line, we have the position check box. There it is. So I'm wanting to make sure, if I cannot hold the C, that's fine, let go, but make sure that at the blue line you are holding F sharp here, A right there, E on the top. So one more time, uh, brown. And there it is. And I don't think I had my thumb in the right position. Holding it down, I'm not going on, I'm just getting comfortable, and then done. Uh, finally, we back up to the beginning where it's the yellow highlights, so holding those down. Okay, getting ready to go. All right, and I'm stopping on that blue line because I had to do a lot. I had to move the thumb in the left hand, I had to reposition my other fingers in the right hand, so that's a lot to coordinate. And you're much better off making sure to nail those kinds of things right away as opposed to kind of practice them like, okay, half of the time they're there, half of the time they're not. And then it kind of builds up the problems down the road. So you really want to address, kind of nip things in, in the bud bef before they get out of hand. So, All right, there they are. Yellow highlights are down. And now I'm just going to the blue line. Okay, once you've felt that segments like this are under your control, more or less, you can probably start building it up to the point where you are, you know, let's, let's go back to the end of this measure. So starting here, you would be like, okay, good. And then you'll be keeping backing up, good. Then you'll keep going to here, good. And you'll be from C. You know, you're kind of practicing from C to see that how I'm keeping the second and third fingers stuck on G sharp and D. I'm going to practice this move. Whoops, didn't do my left hand right. Still didn't do it right. One more time. I should not play that A. And the reason I don't want to play the last A of the measure is because then I need to practice this move in the right hand. And I don't want to do it yet. Too scary. <laughs> so... I did not prepare my thumb correctly. One more time. Okay, good. And finally, yellow highlights. I did not do the right hand, the left hand. Okay, and then finally, Kind of okay, still a couple of problems. But you take time to build it up so that once you've learned it, you don't need to practice it again, basically. You just need to review as you work on other parts. So the same concept will obviously apply to the rest of the piece where you're very, very carefully figuring out what the positions are that you need to be playing in, working through this problem 
backwards like I showed so that you are always in control of where your position is at every point. You're kind of connecting note by note, always stopping at the same point. And before you know it, you'll be mastering one measure, another measure. Of course, there are some repeats, so you don't have to practice the whole piece. But yeah, real quick. So what's in the second measure, for instance, you have this position. And either you have the stretch, which allows you to pre-position the C right away, or it's too much, and then you want to do it on that second beat. But in addition to, um, uh, what am I trying to say, the adjustments in the beginning of that measure, you also want to come back to where the thumb is on C. And so that also would be right here. All right, so you're right away positioning yourself into w where you're going to end up in measure three. Okay, so. And then you, you kind of keep that fourth finger extended. Look at the angle of my fifth finger, right? This is going to be the norm for this piece and really any piece that requires you to cover a lot of ground with your left hand or right hand for that matter. Your, your fifth finger really tends to play at this nine and a half o'clock, 10 o'clock angle, which is easy enough here, not so easy here, but sometimes you have to do that. Anyway, so, so that's the left hand. Right, so make sure you can play it fine in the right hand. That's the starting position. Third finger on E. And you can see how the fifth finger instantly jumps to A. So again, right around here. Here. I would even practice pl placing the first finger on C right away as well. So you can kind of see it squeezed underneath C sharp. Ah, no, I cannot do this. What am I saying? Uh, I apologize. Um, only here. It's only possible here. Yeah, go a little carried away. I was kind of thinking I could do this 2-2 two -two slide, which is possible, but I, I wouldn't complicate things quite so much. Yeah, so right here the thumb comes out. And again, because my hand is already inside the black, the, yeah, kind of the keys with the thumb closer to the blacks, I really want to be inside the keys here. So in the beginning, I don't need to be quite as far inside, but by the second measure, yeah, it will really help if you push the hand all the way in. And that way you can easily reach the B flat when it, the time comes. All right, so same thing. You will practice from the end point. Um, let me close this. Let me delete. Uh, what this mm, cut yeah and now I can set, set myself a stopping point right here so what I'm doing I'm checking my position at that blue line I'm holding the E I'm holding the C I've got the right positioning in the in all the other fingers um, you could even potentially get yourself ready for the G in the fifth finger uh, so that you're absolutely ready for the third measure when it comes up, right, with that G in the melody. But maybe you could do it as you play the B flat, right, so you're not trying. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's always good to prepare ahead of time if you're able to. Hmm. There it is. Uh, so let's put the G right here. And that way we're really practicing. Sorry, I keep pressing the wrong button. Uh, it really bodes well for the, the rest of the piano studies where sometimes you really have to be on top of every position change. and. So let, let's practice doing it right here. All right, so we have... I will even do the second finger because we're going to play like this. 
second finger on C in the third measure. So let's do that too. Right. Now I feel absolutely ready. Because then transition into the third measure will be a piece of cake. Whereas before, if I didn't bother to move from, you know, my second finger on I don't know, D or something, wherever it's going to end up, and my fifth finger is stuck on A, it will be a bit of a doozy. <laughs> suddenly snap into the position for the third measure. So let's let's play it just like this. Right. If I played all of the fingers uh, the way they're prepared, that's the chord. So now just holding the E. Okay then. Yeah by the way not only am I moving the second finger to C, I'm also of course moving the first finger to B flat, but let's go ahead and add that in so there are no mysteries as to how the fifth, the first finger ended up moving to B flat. It's right there. So you can see I'm holding the left hand notes. I'm holding that C in the right uh, right hand, and then I'm going like this. One more time. Just hold. Let me go ahead and highlight those. I'm doing one more time. I'm oh, sorry, no, I should hold two notes. But I'm trying to make this as effortless as possible. And again, um, I didn't write it in, but as I mentioned, uh, my torso really should shift over to the middle C. So T equals C5. So my middle C is C5. All right, so that's what I'm going to remind myself to do at the beginning of this arrangement. And I'm completely messing up because I haven't been practicing enough, right? I'm trying to fake it. And of course, I've deleted all my uh, annotations in the first measure, so I can't even remind myself of what to do. But anyway, so... That's the rough idea of how it should go. But you could see how many instant position shifts I had to accomplish to even be able to walk through it like this. So definitely need to look at all of these um, symbols that show where I'm adjusting my fingers into a new position. Uh, practice through them. The backwards thing is very useful. And just make sure nothing, no stone is left. Ooh, um, let me go ahead and do this. No stone is left unturned. Okay, so then we have this. Okay, one more time. Holding the third beat. Just going all the way to the blue line. Good. Holding this note here. And I guess this note here in the right position. Just making sure any segment I practice is easy, or as easy as I can make it be today. Uh, holding this, whoops, holding from here. And for some reason played the left hand twice like this. Now it's not a big deal, but if I want to play it the way it's written, I'm going to work on it. and the left hand is kind of hanging off the side, the edge of the keys. So I kind of really want to make sure it's glued to this position here. Now I did not play that G. I'm making sure to end up in this position at the blue line. Okay, and then finally holding these down. Every time you back up, what's nice is you only solve one problem. You've already figured out how to play the rest of this measure, right? But now that initial transition 
starting one more note, one more chord back, you're trying to figure out how do I need to adjust my positions and coordinate my hands for that specific moment. Once you're through that, the rest of it should be easier because you've just practiced it a lot, right? So even if it's not perfect, you would at least feel in somewhat of a control. And of course, the nice thing is you do this hard work today, it feels very slow, you're only covering a couple of measures and now you're very tired. But the following day, you will feel much better because now all of this is familiar, right? And so you are going through it, going through it, and your your memory is, oh, okay, I've done this. Okay, I know how to adjust my positions. So make sure to do this work thoroughly, slowly, deliberately, diligently, you know, all these D words, and uh, you'll feel better as a result. Anyway, I'll, let's keep going. So I think I've kind of driven my point into the ground. The rest is very similar. Again, watching my positions. I'll still stay inside the keys, so do put yourself any kind of reminders like that. So you remember that thumbs often have to play inside the white keys to, if they have to navigate to the black keys. Uh, preparing the correct position in my left hand. Uh, the, the fifth finger, I'm not sure where to keep it. I'm keeping it naturally on C right now. And the reason is, uh, say, did I say C? D. I'm keeping it on D right now because I do end up playing the C down the road, yeah? But it's a huge stretch and there is no reason for it. I can always move to C later, but for right now it naturally extends at this angle down to D. So my left hand is all set. You know, my, my second finger will be working through those chromatic steps down the road. But now let's look at the right hand inside the keys, thumb on A. Now you'll notice what happens. I have to play uh, the third finger, oh, fourth, fourth finger on F, and currently it's on E. So I would make sure to move it at the last moment on that D note. So my position symbol reminder would go right here. And that way I can kind of relax my hand a little. Right, and just at that point where you see the square, my fourth is on F, I'm ready to go. couple of ways to do it, but I decided to go with this 4-3-2 fingering, and um, that's what I'll show right here. But if you prefer another uh, set of fingers which you feel has uh, merit uh, in, in this passage, then leave me a comment. So for this I would go with 1 on B, Positioning right away on the D. And then as I play the B, I'm going to shoot out my second finger to F. And that's how I want to play this end of the measure. And that's where I pull the thumb up, and maybe push it a little bit further down. And then I'm in position for measure five and so on. So, uh, coming up, by the way, in, in the left hand, you see I'll have to play the D again with the thumb. So one more time, I'm going to remind myself to move the thumb to D right here. One more time, you've mapped out these two measures in terms of where position adjustments need to happen. Um, if you feel absolutely comfortable where you know exactly where you need to move your fingers um, and, and, and these boxes or whatever symbols you prefer to use kind of get in the way visually, sure, you don't have to do it. I just find it, for me, during the in initial stages of practice, this is very, very helpful. 
maybe this is an easier piece, but certainly when a piece is much harder, it's essential that I practice it just right. And so any kind of reminder to check my position helps me personally. All right, so at the end of this line, I am going to be like this. Um, just make sure I've got everything ready. Um, but, uh, I'm going to not worry about the second finger. It's just going to do whatever it wants to do. What I need to make sure in the left hand is G, D, and then C. And then, you know, if either D or C is too much of a stretch. Now, by the way, notice I'm not even trying to cleanly put them on D and C. I'm making sure they're touching those keys. And so when the time comes, I might adjust it very slightly. You know, if this is too much of a tension problem for your left arm, then, you know, don't hold it right above the keys, but you're just trying to move it as far out as possible so that they're resting basically on the right key. All right, so what do we have? Right, that's what I'm doing in the, in the left hand. So right now I'm going to hold the A flat and then I'm going to go through into this position in the right hand. Yeah, it's going to go into that fifth measure. So same thing. Uh, do I need to be inside the keys at this point? I actually do not. So I would go ahead and give myself the permission <laughs> to pull back out onto the edge right around where the arrow shows. Yeah. You know, that's how measure five goes. I'm not going to have to worry about the thumb playing on black keys anytime soon, so why not make things a little easier for me? All right, with all that said, all the positions checked, all the kind of uh, fingerings discussed, whatever, we're going to just stop right here. Last notes of the measure, of the line. Boom. Good. Once I've established I'm in the right position playing the right notes, let's pack up one. Right, I'm all, all I'm doing is pressing down the D. Okay, now let's go from here. Now that's a, that's a hard one. Checking the position in the left hand. Ooh, sorry, doing too much at the same time. So I'm holding the D, I'm holding the B where the highlight is, and then. So all I'm working on at this point is that shift. Let's actually go ahead and just for clarity's sake uh, add the position that shows that my fourth finger has to move to the B flat. Yeah, so that just kind of further clarifies how I'm moving to finger two. All right, so one more time, holding that blue high, uh, yellow highlight. Well, yellow highlight involves also this note and that note, right? Because they're long. It's, it's not easy when you're doing it like this. Uh, you know, like all of these things combine, you, it's very easy to start panicking. But if all you're doing is holding the yellow highlights, doing that transition, easy, much easier. Anyway. Sorry, holding the yellow highlights, not playing, holding. Okay. Now, lost my little thing, doing it again. Now we start from here. Third finger, sorry. Holding everything down. One more time, yellow. Just freezing at the end, just making sure I did land into the right positions. Keep going. All right, making sure that I'm holding all the things I need to hold, basically. Now that 
that's getting harder. That might be the hardest place of the, in this arrangement. Again, if you disagree, give me a comment. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you just proceed to check every position jump, every shift like that until you feel confident, move through it backwards. Before you know it, you've kind of put all the coordinated movements together and you can play it more effortlessly. But it, it does need time. It's not like in the one practice session you've solved everything. In the one practice session you've figured out what the issues are. Eventually, after a week of just doing it carefully, yeah, you can do it like this. Oops, okay, maybe you cannot do it perfectly. But it, you kind of get the point. Things start to come together and uh, what you then end up discovering are all the other remaining transitions for instance, I often practice, you know, single measure units at first, and then I realize, well, actually what I want to practice are transitions between measures. So I go from the end of a measure into the beginning of the next measure and just make sure those shifts are all figured out as well. But yeah, that, that's what I would do for the rest of this piece. Uh, let me come out of this arrangement. If you're interested in this arrangement and you'd like the score, again, leave me a comment and uh, I'll try to send you a link. So uh, let's, let me just go ahead and play the whole piece and finish this tutorial here. I will leave, I will create a separate recording where it's just recorded later. So if you are paying attention, you can tell me all the places where you saw that I did not adjust my position ahead of time when I could have. And this is what typically happens when you read through a piece, when you haven't practiced it, and you're just trying to survive uh, and doing the best you can, which is, of course, not the best you could do if you practiced. So uh, again, leave any comments if you noticed uh, uh, less efficient performance and um, yeah any other questions or any other spots you want me to follow up on I'll be happy to do that but I, I th essentially I think I covered the main approach and just for the beginning of this piece and luckily the arrangement is very consistent so you need to apply the same principles going forward for the rest of the material <laughs>